on the line Bad bitches, every city in my tribe uh, look, 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 look behind Booty dominate the You are implicitly telling him one of the worst things that he can be is a girl. No, I'm, no, I didn't. When I said don't be a girl, it what I'm saying is, it. what I'm telling to him is make sure that you control your emotions. Don't act feminine. Control your emotions. I told you yeah. feminism oh was God. emotionalism to you, and then you said Because no. it's more accepted, because the thing of it is, as far as men, because you say, a lot of people say, okay, they don't mind men to be, just display emotion. But I guarantee you, if a woman was with a guy, her boyfriend, significant other, who was crying all the time, guess what? She would call him weak She's and dump him, him on the spot. Probably and dump him on the spot. And that's the reality. That's you the reality. have toxic masculinity, Osa. No, it's Listen, the truth. Think women, about it. Think about it. You, no, most of these women out here who say they want a guy to display emotions, Okay. Trust me, if a man was crying to her all freaking day, she would lose faith Why in him. She would dump him in the blink of Why her you eye. Have to go that's to it. that extreme. Like, no. No, I mean, no, that's for real. That's for real. Women well, well, generally so speaking, want a man who's been no, able to control a second of the day. No, Whether it's a no, man listen, or a woman, this is nobody likes conjecture. That. No, this is not conjecture. This is reality. Yes, is. You know Women want a man who they can depend on, who is strong and confident, who's able to control his emotions, and mostly able to protect her. I don't care what anyone has to say. That's what it is. And a woman does not want to be with a super overly emotional man. Right. It's that conjecture. simple. You're you making an really no, it's a, no, it's not conjecture. That's reality. Yes, That's what that is. No, That's not. what that You're is. You're jumping to conclusions without any kind of evidence. That's called conjecture. I don't need evidence. I've I've been on this well, planet for thirty go. some odd years. Lost. Listen, listen, listen. No, nope. I've been on this planet for thirty some odd years. You know what I'm saying? Congrats. So you the want fact of the matter is this. Well, cookies night. I like cookies. Cookies are cool. But I'm anyway, you know, yeah, cookies are cool. But my thing is, is is that no, my thing is is that like I said before, you know, men, women say that they want an overly emotional man. Trust me, you don't. You don't. We didn't say an overly what? I didn't emotional say man. That. You are just going to the extreme now to fit your own narrative. It is okay no, for men to cry. If if my boyfriend or partner lost his parent and was crying all day, I wouldn't be like, get up, you little bitch. Like, stop crying about it. Like, no, this is someone who is grieving. <laughs> and like, are you kidding me? The hell was that a snicker? I feel like you think that there's no middle ground. Like, obviously, man or woman, nobody wants a partner that's crying or unhappy every second of the day. But there's a middle ground. No, I hear you. you uh, hold on. I'm acceptance a... towards men that do cry and not belittle their emotions. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on one sec. I'm going to answer this call. Give me give me like five minutes. I'll be back. Hold on. Okay. You make a... okay. We don't need five minutes. Um, you guys breeze in the box. Does someone want to drop? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. Thanks, Jaden. Bye. Yo. Hey, oh, hey. Hi. Oh my god, I had so much to say. I think he's coming back. No invite back. Okay, let's let's <laughs> ask the class. Class, give me a happy face if you don't want Osa to come back, and give me a sad face if you do. Wait, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, because I had my AirPods in. I don't think like like everything he was saying. I don't think he was realizing that like. it's not accepted for men to be emotional like men are supposed to regulate their emotions like he was completely walking right past the point that those standards are put on men by other men exactly yes oh okay. it's a good way of okay yeah but like when he was um talking about the kill all men thing or the k-a-n and then like complaining about that and then somebody brought up like the r word for all women like what a lot of men don't realize when they're complaining about the k-a-n hashtags and stuff like that is that like the second one the r word all women like that's something that like actually is already happening in society and that's why those are two completely different things yeah right hello like, welcome are you there james yeah i'm here i yeah i really wanted to talk to him oh. i really did because i i well if you look at my photo you can tell i'm a big guy and i've had to 
a very traumatic life because of the whole toxic masculinity. It's very yeah, traumatic. It really does hurt men just as much as it hurts women. Because, well, I'm even now facing back problems because it, it, I'm one of those people, everyone walks up and it's like, oh, it's the big guy. Have him lift this and that and it work. And now I have three ruptured discs and three protruding discs. And that's just the physical part of it. And then I've had to face with my daughter who had a very neglectful mother. I had to go through a lot through court to get custody for two years. And it cost me $18,000. And I had to prove that I was the dad. And they okay. and I had to actually get the rights because the state I'm in does not give father rights until you really fight. I luckily had a very good attorney. But yeah, it's men like him that make everyone suffer. It's just despicable. Because we should be able to talk about how we feel and be a person. Absolutely. And this is why, well, and this is, I work in behavioral health mostly, and I have to deal with men too, that I'm also do medical half the time, and I'm dealing with the SI patients that have hurt themselves. I've had to deal with, and men especially, use firearms. I've had people that have even lost their vision from a firearm because of self-harm. And it, it's got to stop at some point and we have to hold each other accountable, especially men. And that's why I wanted to talk to him and give him a healthy dose of reality. Because it's just not okay. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. I'm 44. I've had to see, to see too much of this. It's just another dose of why everyone just is not fair or kind to each other. And being a man is his excuse. Yeah, I just very bothersome, very upset listening to him. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not uh, the only one who is upset. Well, and I've I've seen him other places too, trying to save people. And it's some people don't need saved. No. There was some that was someone was in the process of getting his life set up in case he needed to take elective um, euthanasia in his country because of chronic health. And he kept trying to save this person and be intrusive and pry into their life and all this. And it's just like, let the guy be. You don't have to save him. This is a, just a person. So yeah, he is so toxic. Yeah, but, I've had to to Osa quite a few times. Yeah. Well, and he doesn't like me. At least every time I've run into him. Well, the last time you also tried to convince people to do uh, basically like voodoo medicine and prayer to treat cancer. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. And I tore into <laughs> them, especially right after I lost my awesome. my roommate. Dad is was like my uncle in a lot of ways. And we just lost him in December to cancer. So, yeah, he walked into. Yeah, he walked into a really bad moment. I'm like, he's just a flaming jackass. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm Benton. sending you love. Yeah, very sorry for your loss. I appreciate it. I know. I also remember you lost someone recently. I'm sorry for you as well. And on a brighter note, I also was in Bradley's live uh, this morning. So I remember all hail Volva. <laughs> sorry? Yeah. Bradley I remember is Brad's perfection. Live. Bradley's live. All hell <laughs> vulva. Uh, was that last night? I, last night or this morning? I work night shift, so it's all the same to me. I see. <laughs> um, was that the lady we were talking about? Like, uh, Oh, yeah. Um, abortion and then sex health education. That was frustrating. 
Yeah, and she was sexualizing the term um, vaginal opening. That's crazy. Yeah, I was like, I was commenting and I was being very polite, but oh my god. Oh, he's back. He is back. Osa's back. Wait, I want to talk to Osa for a little bit, if that's okay. I do have to go to work in like 30 minutes. So yeah, to... yeah, I'll drop because I feel like he could benefit from your perspective, Scotsman. I appreciate right, it. I, yeah, thank I, you. I will try and be nice. I told you what's going on, y'all. I'm never afraid of the smoke. I was listening to what Scotland was saying. No, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Oh, so I really think you need to, to get a reality check on the whole toxic masculinity. Tell me why. Because this whole being a man thing, mm-hmm. I have seen it hurt so many people. Mm-hmm. Part of being a man is being able to show compassion and kindness, but also being able to cry. And yeah, being a caregiver. Okay. I I work in healthcare. I take care of people, psychiatric patients, medical patients, stuff. I hug, I hold my patients sometimes when they need it. Mm-hmm. And does that make me less of a man? No. I hold I hold and hug my daughter. I took care of her, changed her diapers every time I was with her. I was her main caregiver. I was both mom and dad for many years. Mm -hmm. That's being a man. And being a man is also being in touch with your feminine parts, your feminine mentality. You can be emotional. You need to be a well-rounded person. And a lot of what you're saying, I think it's been ingrained in you. And some, and it's can be very hurtful and it's, that's like inherent bias and racism. You may not see some of what you're doing, but it is definitely affecting people. Okay. Can I so respond? you can do something about it. Yeah, go can ahead. I respond to what you said. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So you said uh, you talked about masculinity, right? So the first thing you yes. said that I paid attention to was that it's important to be uh, kind, right, and compassionate, yes. which I don't disagree yeah. with that. I don't disagree with that at all, but usually the pushback that I get is when I talk about what it means to be a man in respect to traditional gender roles, which a lot of people call me misogynistic for. Like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, being a kind of compassionate. I think as men, we're supposed to do that. However, we're also supposed to be, because for me, my thing is, is that as a man, you have to be willing to say the truth and be willing to take all of the heat and the criticism that comes with it. That means standing up for truth and be completely, 100 and totally, 100% be unwavering in the truth. People come against me for what I say because they say that just because I say that a man is supposed to be a leader of his household and then a woman is supposed to be submissive underneath the man, they call me misogynistic for it, which I don't but think is misogynistic it's not at in all. A dominant position. But, but huh? that's an inherent bias. A leader How doesn't is- necessarily back out calls and people are supposed to submit and just follow them. A leader asks questions. A leader makes self-sacrificing. And people can switch off taking the lead. I'm so fucking cute, bitch. I'm so fucking cute.